13, 1852, the Governor of New Zealand, Sir George Grey, gave to the Bishop of New Zealand, George Augustus Selwyn, a grant of 252 acres in trust for the education of children at Whanganui. This land grant was then an area of swamp and sand hills, remote from the little town of 300 houses. The best that could be done with the land was to let it in small blocks for grazing. It was from the meagre rents that funds were accumulated to start a school. In 1854, the first buildings were completed and built. Under the first headmaster, the Reverend C.H.S. Nichols, who was also in charge of the parish, 25 boys, three of them Maoris, are listed from 1854 to 1860, when the school, such as it was, was burnt down. Five years after the fire, in 1865, it reopened as an endowed school. Over the years, the school's reputation and numbers grew steadily, and during the second term of 1911, it moved from its Victoria Avenue site to its present location. The Wanganui Collegiate School aims to give a broad education based on the spiritual principles and values of the Christian faith. In its curriculum and through its teaching, every effort is made to foster and encourage the academic, cultural and physical growth and development of each boy. It seeks to send boys out into the wider community aware of its needs and problems, eager to use their abilities and willing to make a growing and positive contribution to society. The school is governed by a board of trustees, appointed by the Diocesan Trust Board of the Anglican Diocese of Wellington. The chairman of the board is Mr. S. W. Dobbin. In recent years, two of the most important events at the school have been the decision, after careful investigation, to remain independent. Secondly, the appointment of Mr. Ian McKinnon as headmaster. The decision not to apply to integrate with the state system was one that was not reached lightly. Suffice to say, the surrender of independence was felt too high a price to pay for the obvious economic advantages. This decision brings with it the obligation of the Whanganui Collegiate School family to support the school. What we all desire is a school strongly rooted in the traditions of the past but conscious of the needs of the future. For Whanganui Collegiate School to remain independent, it must remain financially independent. The farm at Tokamaru has over 500 acres planted in pine trees and this forestry development will provide a rich legacy for the school. There is also rental from the college estate in Whanganui and property investments in Auckland and this all supplements board revenue. What the board has sought to do is to obtain a maximum return on its assets. We face an ongoing problem of maintaining present facilities and providing new ones. To keep abreast of modern day education, a school such as Whanganui has to consider these developments. So when we look round the school that has served past generations and look to the future, the Board of Trustees realised that a substantial capital investment fund was critical for the long term future of the school. So the foundation concept proved to be the answer, for it will provide both on the short term and long term facilities and scholarship and bursary assistance to students in the school, as well as the extra benefits that increasingly will be needed to secure the services of dedicated and sound teaching staff. The foundation will be a trust set up under the Charitable Trusts Act and will be a permanent structure. It will be autonomous and will set out to provide a corpus of assets. As Chairman of the Board of Trustees, 
I commend the Foundation to you and solicit your support. The apparently limitless energy of boys at Wanganui Collegiate School is applied to various sports such as football, hockey and soccer. Roll your hands seven, roll them, roll them round, roll them float. The Wanganui River has provided the school with a sport at which it has excelled for many years, rowing. In the area of competitive sport, there's a growing number of schools now involving themselves in the Round the Lake Relay, which is hosted annually by the Collegiate School Cross Country Club. But of course, education is more than just physical. Most of the time spent at school is in the classroom. Here too, Wanganui Collegiate School can boast excellent facilities. And in keeping with the development of modern teaching aids, computer equipment is being used to best advantage. Music has always been a fundamental part of Wanganui collegiate life. Apart from singing, tuition of musical instruments has grown and diversified to the extent that the school now maintains a first-rate orchestra, as seen here in a morning assembly. Here in big school, boys are rehearsing for a musical evening. Tomorrow, of course, we have the annual fixtures against the boys. College. A major characteristic of the school is its house system. The senior housemaster involves himself in the day-to-day -day activities of those in his house. Accommodation for boarders is available in houses which are among the best to be found in New Zealand. Time in the dining room is always an important event. The matron at one of the houses renders some first aid to one of the boarders. About some plaster, oh. Right. Oh, um, somebody else helping with a stick. And tomorrow we'll have another look at it. Today, after more than 125 years service to the country, 
Wanganui Collegiate School stands at a crossroads. I can assure you that it still holds fast to its basic philosophy. A broad education based on firm Christian principles so that each boy may realize to the full his intellectual, physical and spiritual potential and eventually take his place in a community aware of its needs and eager to make a contribution to its welfare. But that being so, it is also aware that it must not take its future for granted simply because of a distinguished past. The school was founded in 1854 following a land grant by the then governor, Governor Gray, to the Bishop of New Zealand, Bishop Selwyn, both names well known to us at the school. However, it was the period 1882 to 1911 that the school firmly established itself on the New Zealand scene. This was the Harvey Empson era, and the fact that both those names are immortalized on the drive is testimony to their contribution. Let's talk for a few minutes about Old Boys Weekend. We are privileged to be in a school that has a strong Old Boys Association that supports us so warmly right throughout our time as a school in existence. And I'm grateful to them, and one of the pleasures I have as headmaster is to go around and meet the old boys. And it is only appropriate, in view of the support that they give the school, that at least once a year we should honour them by having an old boys weekend here. And they join us in hosting an occasion to which old boys, parents and friends are invited. <coughs> The school is attractively appointed on grounds of 28 hectares. The houses, particularly now with the new wings, are spacious and, with their lawn tennis courts and attractive gardens, are the envy of most schools. Big school with the adjacent science block, art studio and music school is an area that is constantly occupied by purposeful groups of boys. Likewise, the old dining hall now a highly praised school library and within the same building the control centres of the headmaster's study and common room and the bursar's department. Then running away from the crescent shaped sand ridge, magnificent and well used playing fields. It would be hard to find anywhere in the country such well cared for and well used grassy acres. However, houses teaching and administrative blocks and playing fields cannot on their own supply all that is required for a full education in the 1980s and beyond. Today's parents probably give more thought to education than has generally been the case. They are particularly conscious of the need to ensure that their children's education, whatever their individual talents and abilities, is both meaningful and sound. To meet this demand, and by doing so acknowledging what is, in fact, a full education, a school must offer a broad range of activities in addition to a high standard of competence in the classroom. The key to this lies, of course, in the calibre of those serving in the common room. However, it is only proper that they should have facilities that enable them to present their skills. With an experienced team of masters, and facilities equal to that experience, Wanganui Collegiate School will continue to serve the community well by producing soundly educated young men. It will also meet the demand of the parent of the 1980s and beyond, and hence as a school, it will continue to attract boys in spite of threatening external forces, such as the falling role which lies ahead.